Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 95 says, so come. Can we have Psalm 95 on the board, please? All right. Psalm 95. Amen. Amen. It says, O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Verse 3 says, For the Lord is great, is a great God and a great King above all gods. And in his hands are the deep places of the earth. And strength of the hills is his also. Amen. Amen. The Psalms is encouraging us to be thankful unto the Lord. Amen. So this morning we are going to sing about the greatness of God. You're going to sing, Great is your love for me. With thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. With a thank give, with a thanksgiving attitude. We're gonna sing great is your love for me. Great is your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. You showed your love for me. Gave your son to set me free. Gave your son to set me free. He died and I my left. Crucified upon a tree. Went to Calvary for me. He prayed a love, prayed a love as no man that lived. That the man has to live. your love for me. Great is your mercy and your Great is your love. Your love for me. And I love you. Yeah. 
Sunday in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Let's do our scripture of the week. And it's going to be coming from Romans 12, verse 1. Verse 1. And it says that, I beseech ye, you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I beseech ye, I beseech you, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, Romans 12, verse 1, amen. All right, let's all join in together. Let's all join in together as we share the scripture of the week. Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, verse 1. Amen. 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 And now we have the blessing to be in the an international church. So we go in the verse of the week in French. Hallelujah. And I always say, French is simple. Whatever you hear, whatever you hear, okay. Uh, Romain 12, verset 1. Je vous exhorte, donc frère, par les compassions de Dieu, à offrir vos corps comme un sacrifice vivant, sain, agréable à Dieu, ce qui sera de votre part un culte raisonnable. Romains 12, verset 1. Amen. You can give a clap to the Lord. Alléluia. Um, this morning we are blessed with a testimony, I believe. Um, we have Sister Naomi. She wants to tell us what the Lord has done for her. So uh, I want you to give clap and to encourage her as she's coming to the pulpit and say what the Lord has done to her. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. So my sister, you can tell us your name and tell us what the Lord has done to you. Uh, I'm here to share my testimony for what the Lord has done for me. Word cannot express what I'm feeling right now because I know God is with me, uh, with everybody here. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, I had a, a hyperthyroid. And I, w- I went to a treatment, like the I one two three treatment. So uh, it's something that can burn the thyroid, like it was bigger. So it was bigger. Samash. Okay. Okay, it was uh, kind of big in my throat and I can't swallow something like quickly or I, I used to. So I went through the treatment for like two weeks and it went away. So I became like a hypothyroid now and I have to take uh, um, levothyroxine every morning for... Um, for my hormones. So for that, I have to go to uh, a, a routine uh, blood work every three months. So I went there in January and I did the blood work and the doctor said, I can't uh, wait for your next appointment. You have to come to my office. So I went there and she said, there is something wrong with your liver and you have anemia, and she said like some, a lot of disease. And I was like, what? She said, yes. I don't know what's, what's going on, but that's what you have. And I have to send you to the hematologist. The, the, when you walk there, it's like oh, cancer, something comprehensive. She said, don't be afraid of what you will see at the entrance. <laughs> so she said you have to go I have to make an appointment for you quickly for him to see you because I know something is going on with you and she said I said okay she said the appointment was Mar- March 31st so before the appointment I have to go and do the blood test again for her to, to see so but before that when she gave me the result I was like, God, how can I be sick while you have the warehouse of all the organs? You have the warehouse of everything. You just need to replace it, everything that uh, is damaged or something. And we had the three weeks prayer, fasting and praying online here. So I was going through the, 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 the prayer. I was doing the prayer. And that's how I, I show my paper, my result to, work, to God. And I said, that's what I've been through. And I was asking uh, Patricia to, to pray for me. And I told her to join the prayer group. And she said, oh, okay, I will try this time to join it. And the pastor was saying, don't sleep. I can see people who are sleeping. And she fell asleep. I was calling her. She fell asleep. And she couldn't wake up no more. And she was saying, God, please just give me like a, a little, maybe a little strength, like I can wake up and pray with people. And she couldn't. She had to fight and ask God. She said she had like a 15% of her strength came back. That's how she wake up with me and we pray. We was praying. And, and that Sunday, I came to church and I shared the result to Lady Pastor 
and she said, okay, can you call somebody else so we can join together and pray for that because God will reverse what we are seeing here. And I call uh, Sister Auntie B and Lady Pastor, they hold me, I was in the middle and they pray for me. And that day when I went home, my sleep was like, I don't know, it was good. And after that, two weeks later, I went back to my uh, second blood test. And that's how um, the doctor told me. She was like, she was looking at me and she said, what have you been doing to yourself? And I said, <laughs> yeah, I said, I've been doing Jesus. And she was like, what? I said, yes. I said, oh, I trust him and he have the, the warehouse of everything. So I trust him. And that's how I came here. And I, she said, yeah, you need to continue doing that because I don't know why I send you to the other one, but you have to go because the appointment was made already. So that's why I, I show Lady Pastor my two results. And she said, you have to share your testimony with everybody. So I thank God for everything. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, what a blessing. And as it says in the Bible, we, they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. Thank you for such a powerful, powerful testimony. We thank the Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, now it is time for my favorite group in all of Las Vegas. I tell you, you won't find a better group anywhere. You can look high, low, north, south, east, west. You won't find none better. I want you guys to please, with Jesus' joy, please welcome the Dancing Stars! Big mistake. See the target in my soul, but you 
fucking penetrate. Now I got you trying to show up in my den today. Don't get hit upside the head with a den and play. Nice. Thought I told you, thought I told you what was you was real. Thought I told you when I see you, I'm a shoot to kill. Got my partners in the matrix cause they pop the feels. Why? Noise and women, they addicted trying to cut the grill. Oh, no. This may be over your head, but I got something for the boogie man that's over your head. Yo, my body on my hip, I got the Bible in the end. And I'ma shoot him in the living, and then he let it spread. Never try to push it up, all day. Don't do it unless you're ready for a long day. Like, ooh, don't get it confused. Never run up on me unless you tryna get a view. Never wanna run up on me, it's bad. Never wanna run up on me, it's bad. God on my side, God is my dad, and the devil wanna run up on me. Wow. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Please, I want you to have your attention here. Hallelujah. Put your hands together once again for the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, can we have Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17? Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17, which says, Every man shall give as is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which hath given thee. Hallelujah. According to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which hath given thee. Hallelujah. How many of us are in the hospital this morning? Let me see by hand those of us who are in the hospital. Are you in the hospital this morning? No, you are not in the hospital this morning. Are you, by way or chance, any of your body defected that you cannot walk? No. No, right? So it means God has been good to us. Hallelujah. So we are going to give according to the blessing that he has given unto us. Hallelujah. So I want you to give God a good offering this morning. Hallelujah. Because... The more you give, the more thy shall receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if today is your first time of giving, I don't think we should even do this. And let me see by hand those of us who have not subscribed to Test TV. Those of us who have not subscribed to Test to Give, let me see by hand and I'll let somebody help you right away. Test to Give. Everyone has subscribed to Test to Give. So just test your, 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 your amount. Let's say $100 and then add LCI to it. To the number 45777 and it will go straight to the account you can also test by you can also keep by uh, paypal by sending your money to paypal.qlcamericas.gmail.com you can also give by writing a check to the church you write your check to lighthouse chapel international p.o box 220718 new hall california the zip code is ca 91321. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment to give God a good offering this morning. With the same gadget that you used to give God an offering this morning, I want you to lift it up above your head. Let us pray over it, please. Lift your phone, your check, above your head, and let us pray over it, please. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Father, we bless your name for blessing our household, Lord, with this finances, Lord. Father, it is out of it that we are given unto you for the betterment of your ministry, Lord. Father, we pray that you bless those who are able to give and make way for those who are not able to give, Lord. Father, give us job security in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Nothing less than 
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest ray, but only trust in Jesus' name.
here in your presence. We are gathered. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for another beautiful day. Um, just be seated for a moment. Amen. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your mercies. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here? Are you blessed to be alive? The psalmist said, it's only the living that praise you. The dead cannot praise you. Amen. Amen. And then the songwriter says, I'll praise my maker whilst I have my breath. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Jesus said that if we don't praise him, he will command the stones to worship him. Amen. So no stone is to praise me and no stone is to take my place. Amen. When Satan decided that he was not going to worship God anymore, he was replaced. I don't know who is leading the choir in heaven, but I know that they, the devil was leading the choir. Some people claim that we have replaced him because we have been made to worship God. Amen. We have been created to worship God. Amen. So if you are not doing the purpose for which you are created, you are useless. The Bible says you are made, you are created to worship God. Amen. Hallelujah. So today we are blessed to be in his presence. We are blessed to be alive. We are blessed to be granted grace and mercy and to be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen, somebody. Amen. So I just want you to tune in here and let's have a good time in the presence of God and uh, be blessed. Amen. Have you been watching? Do you look at the skies? In Las Vegas, the, star, the skies have been speaking, but you don't, you don't see. You don't see. I've been watching the moon go and come. And before I'm aware, it's the new moon. Before I'm aware, it's full moon. Before I'm aware, it's an old moon. Before I'm aware, it's a new moon. It's a new moon again. The new moon appeared yesterday. It's racing so fast. And um, we're already in April. A quarter of the year is gone already. And uh, God has been good to us. Amen. And when you look around, you look, I mean, as a songwriter said, that um, as you look around, souls are parting every day. And every time we hear news here, somebody's gone, somebody's gone, somebody's gone. Well, somebody's come to us. That means we are being born. But we just have a destiny with God. And um, we thank the Lord for making it possible for us to be saved. Amen. And to also make a way for others to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is our mandate and this is our destiny to have souls saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus did not save us to give us money. He saved us to take us to heaven. And he gave us a job to do. And the job is to become fishers of men. The reason why I'm alive is to win souls for Jesus. The reason why I'm alive is to help somebody get to know God. The reason why I'm alive is to bring somebody from darkness into light. The reason why you are alive is to bring salvation to somebody. Say amen. The reason why we are here as a church is to bring salvation to somebody. Amen. Easter is coming. Easter is about Jesus. Well, they call it Easter. Easter is Easter. Oh, whatever you call it. It's just a time that we celebrate when Jesus was crucified and when he rose up from the grave. Every day is Christmas for me and every day is Easter for me. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. But the main aim still is the main aim is to bring somebody to Jesus. Every Sunday when we gather together, we must be inviting people to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what we are supposed to do, to bring somebody to Christ Jesus. Even before we gather, every day as you go around the streets, your job, your aim is to bring somebody to Jesus. That's your number one mandate. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So coming, Easter is coming. We have Easter Friday, which is the 15th of April. We'll be here to the night to have a good Easter Friday service. Amen. And before, amen, amen, amen. And um, in the morning, we'll be tuning into Accra to join in with our prophets as we'll be having a massive Easter Friday, Good Friday, um, should I call it, service, healing service in Accra. We'll be working at that time, but you can tune in, amen. In the evening, we'll be gathered here to have it. It's a great time to invite your friends and your family. Some people go to church only Easter time. So this is the time for a good harvest for the Lord. Amen. So Easter Friday, make a date with Jesus. We're supposed to meet on Saturday night, but we will decide not to meet on Saturday night for a reason. Because we have we like everybody to be preparing for our Sunday service. Don't come here alone. 
Sunday on Easter Sunday is a great time in some place in Africa somewhere. That's the time when the whole, a, a whole tribe meets. But we are going to meet as a tribe of Jesus. We are all going to be here on Easter Sunday. We call it Swollen Sunday. That is one the church be swollen. We want two times. This is not our regular church number we're supposed to be. We are supposed to be more than this. We are more than this. And we are supposed to be twice that. So on Sunday, Easter Sunday, we want every seat filled. We have more chairs there. COVID is gone. Don't be afraid of whatever COVID-19. We can rearrange the chairs. We will still be gelling, etc. So Easter Sunday, we want this whole place filled. Amen. With human beings. Say amen. So don't come here and be looking around and saying, where's everybody? Where are your people that you brought? Amen. So we are targeting Easter Sunday. Uncle Francis, these papers back there, you can get the flyers, make your flyers. You go and give to somebody. Amen. You are the evangelist now. Go and tell, give somebody in the marketplace, wherever you meet them, give it to them. Gas station, whoever they are, chicken, as a chicken. Young, old, African, Mexican, whatever it is, just give it. You are all your, your purpose to tell them about Jesus. Just give it to them. Say amen. And I believe that God is going to bless you as you do this. And then you can send it by electronic means. Electronic means we have the e version. Send it out and bring somebody to Jesus. Amen. So on Easter Sunday, we're going to have a good time here, a beautiful service. We're going to have good food, good music, and we're going to have Christ Jesus here with us. Amen. Don't just scream if you don't bring food. You are supposed to bring good food too. Amen. We're going to have a celebration in the house of God. So we call it the greater love service. Jesus said, Great, greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. That's why we have entitled it Greater Love because it's Easter Sunday. Greater Love. So take one of these, get the e-version and send it around and make sure his house is full. Say, I'll make sure his house is full. I'll make sure his house is full. Amen. And we will be blessed. Amen. And then before I preach, before we finish church, there are only nine books here. So I won't tell you. Last time we had ten books. I think so we didn't get some. <laughs> uh, but which book was that again? Then I will, how can I say thanks? But it's another book that Prophet wrote called Fruitfulness. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing and launch it here. Um, I think Apostle had it and Reverend Bishop Henry had it and we are the third North America to have it. So you are privileged to have this book in our church today. We'll launch it before we leave. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you here? I said you are privileged. Ask the pastor, Akole, who else? He said, oh, we and Bishop Henry and Bishop, uh, Bishop um, Apostle Joel. I said, beautiful. Amen. So make sure you get one. If you didn't get one of the other one, make sure you get this one. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. So let us pray again. Father, we thank you for our offering and we praise you for all that you've done for us. And we pray that you'll be glorified here in your presence. We worship you and we exalt you, Jesus. We magnify and we honor you right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So to preach, we're just going to invite a state, sing a prayer song to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to preach a little bit and we'll be going home. Amen. Hallelujah. We are knocking on the doors of heaven. Hallelujah. We are knocking on the doors of heaven. Let's rise up as we sing this song to the Lord. Amen. And this is all God wants. This is what makes heaven happy. This is our prayers that make heaven happy. Amen. Make it fast for me, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Start. No rest till your kingdom come on earth. In position, watch and hear the Look 
for your word to bear fruit in all of the years. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for the Lord as we continue service. Amen. Well, it's nice to see you this day, the fourth, is it fourth or third? I don't know. The third of April, 2022. Amen. All right. Do you have your Bibles? Take your Bible with me. Say, lift your Bible up. <laughs> and let me see whether you have a cell phone. <laughs> I hope it's a real Bible. Say, this is my Bible. Say, every Christian must have a Bible. And I have a Bible. This is the Word of God. I know it is the Word of God. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone. By but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So I will live by these words and I will have life by these words. I thank you Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that the entrance of his word brings light. So the entrance of his word will bring you light today. Say, the entrance of his word will bring me light today. I didn't hear you well. Say, the entrance of his word will bring me light today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, it's good to be in the house of God. Amen. And um, I'm just glad to be alive. It's just great to be alive. It's just great to be alive. Amen. But whether I live, whether I die, I live for the Lord. Amen. Paul says that if for in this old world alone we have hope. Of all men, we are the most miserable. But we know we have a hope stored up in heaven for us. Amen. I mean, a hope stored up in heaven for the future. And we have a hope even now. Because Christ in us is the hope of glory. Somebody say amen. Say Christ in me is the hope of glory. Amen. So we preach about Jesus. Jesus crucified. Jesus buried. Jesus risen up. And Jesus coming soon. And that's what we preach about. Amen. As we hear right now. 
Our bishop is in northern Ghana somewhere in a small town called Nakpanduri, in the corner of Ghana somewhere. What is he doing there? He's preaching Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not looking for money. He's preaching Jesus. Say he's preaching Jesus. And I'm glad to support the Healing Jesus campaign as they go about preaching Jesus and bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance to many people. Amen. And we are part of this body. And I'm so glad to be part of it. Can you show me that testimony? There's one testimony that I put on Facebook. Just bring it up quickly. Amen. Play it loud with music. Two minutes. You got it? But when she stepped her foot on this field after the prayer, she noticed she could stand small. And when she went home and slept over, when she woke up in the morning, she realized she could walk all by herself. Evangelist, look at her. 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 She was crawling. She was crawling evangelist to do what? what? She couldn't walk. She had her father. Her father father was here to collaborate. What is it? This is how she'll do it. Wow. Two years. Then she'll do this. And then she will she will pause. Wow. Yes. Evangelist. Wow. But now. But hey! confined to the house and because of that she started putting on weight because she couldn't move wow. she said people were talking that she's just sitting at home and not doing anything and she was so hurt about that wow. she said look at me i was sick that's why i was not jesus is a healing jesus she's a healing she's she's doing doing wonders in Bumpuru. amen amen so we have a great hope amen Sister Naomi's testimony is great. She said what? God has a bank of organs. <laughs> I like that. God has a bank of organs so God can heal her. Amen. And we serve the healing Jesus. Somebody say amen. All right, let's look at the scriptures quickly. So we talk about Easter coming. Easter is all about Jesus. It's about Jesus coming down to save us and to redeem us from hell and to translate us to heaven. Amen. One of these days... We all want to go to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's appointed unto men once to die and after that judgment. So as you see people, they are all going to go. It said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. That each every one of us will be paid back according to, according to how we have lived our life on this earth. Amen. And the Bible says again, God is not a man that he should be mocked. Neither is he. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Amen. I'm still looking at, um, when I see funeral announcements, I laugh. I mean, I still laugh. Everybody's been called to a glorious homecoming. A glory call. But not everybody's going to heaven. We will not deceive ourselves. So make sure you are going, and I believe that you are going. And make sure your brother is going, your sister is going, your nephew is going, your auntie is going, everybody is going. A soul is a soul is a soul, and it is precious to God. Amen. So, welcome to church. You see, it's boring. It's not boring. This makes God happy. We'll be inviting people for our greater love feast on uh, Easter Sunday. Amen. How are we going to do it? We're preaching again on um, practical steps of helping God. Actually, we're going to help God. The Bible says we are co laborers with God. Amen. We are what? Co laborers with God. Amen. Yeah. We are co laborers with God. Amen. So we're going to preach on practicing what we call an akazo, comparing power, how to practice, how to bring people to God. Please don't be bored. In heaven one day, you'll be glad we told you these things. 
to participate to bring somebody to Jesus. Amen. So we read from the scripture, Luke chapter 14 and verse number 20, uh, 14, 16 to 24. Let's read it quickly. It said, Then he said unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servants at supper time to say to them, That were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five oxen of yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly onto the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out onto the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Amen. That my house may be filled. Amen. And God also, this is the house of God. This is the house of God. This is the place of God. And God wants his house to be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants his house to be filled. Amen. The Bible says that the cattle upon a thousand hills are the Lord's. Everything that we see belongs to the Lord. If every human being was made by God, and the devil has stolen the human beings and their hearts from God, but God wants them in, and that's why Jesus came. The same old thing, they preach Christ, and we preach Christ. Jesus came for this one reason, to seek and to save that which was lost. And it will never change until eternity, and throughout eternity. Amen. So God wants his house to be filled. He wants his church to be filled. In the book of Isaiah says, the latter days, the, the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be the chiefest amongst the mountains. And people shall come to it. And they shall come to inquire of the Lord in the house of God. Amen. So God wants the mountain, the mountain of the Lord's house to be the chiefest amongst the mountains. He wants this is part of the Lord's house, and the mountain of the Lord's house must be the cheapest among the things. And people should come and inquire therein. Nations shall flow unto it, and they will come inquiring. Say amen. Hallelujah. So this is what we are doing. Inviting people to God's house, to the mountain of the Lord's house. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And we say that these days, without that much cohesion, people will not come. But we want them to come in. Amen. And we'll do our portion. We will do our part for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You must make it happen for God. God is counting on you. And God is counting on me to save two million people in the city. The last scripture in the best in the book of Jonah, my favorite prophet. <laughs> my favorite prophet is Jonah. The last verse there. At the end of it, chapter 4, it says that God was telling Jonah, he said, Jonah, don't you care about this city, 600,000 people who don't know their left from their right? And the question comes to me and to you. Don't you care about this city, which people have given it a name, Sin City? Don't you care about the souls? Don't you care about the people? As you go along the Las Vegas Strip and you see all these people, don't you care about them? It says, thou hast clapped pity on the God. Oh, no, this is the last verse, my dear. Don't you care about them? We must care about them. He said, sh said should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons? Six score means twelve. So, twelve thousand, is it six score? So, six score, that's twelve, twelve thousand persons that cannot descend between their right and their left hand, and also much cattle. This is what God will say about Las Vegas. Don't you care about this great city and all the people therein? They said the neighbor was a sin city. We call this place a sin city too. So we are just like Nineveh. If you like to see, come with me. You want to come with me? I'll take you to a mountain top where I'll show you the whole city. You want to come? I can I can go with you this afternoon if you don't mind. I'll take you to a mountain top. When we stand there, you see Las Vegas from east to west, from north to south. You see the whole place, and then you will become like Jonah, where God will say that, "Don't you care about this city? 
I showed Ivan from, from that mountain top. I, I showed him the whole city. I took Robert there. He took you there too. Yeah, and then he took Robert, Thomas there. Yeah. So we should care about it. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we are doing this day, we're talking about Sunday Sunday thing. It's not about me. It's about God. It's not about Bishop Dad. It's not about Apostle Joel. It's about God. It, you want to make God happy. You want to bring some people to the house of God. Above all, to bring some people to eternity. One day when you die, you're very happy you did it. When you see people go, <laughs> well, do we see hell from heaven? I hope we don't see. Maybe I don't think that we haven't seen hell. Because if you see hell, hell will be too miserable. But if you could see hell right now, you'll be jumping up and, and praying for this, praying and supporting this, that people will come into church. Amen. Above all, come into Christ Jesus. So, how do we practice this? How do we bring people to come to know God? Amen. Step one. There's a preparation that is done for a great supper. And now you are included. Say, I'm included. Don't exclude yourself. God is calling everybody, male, female, black, white, short, everything. When he called Peter, uh, Peter, he said to him, I will follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. So you are a fisher of men. Amen. Say, I'm a fisher of men. Say, I'm a fisher of men. So you have to prepare yourself to, for this business. You have, you have to make preparation. It's not only the pastor. You have to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone who wants to be used by God must prepare himself for this. For this. Amen. You must what? Prepare yourself. Say amen. And you are included. And thank God in our church it's only pastors who preach. Everybody preaches. Amen. Hallelujah. So you have to prepare yourself for this. Do you want to do something for God? Do you want to be useful in the hands of God? Or you want to be thrown away by God? So if you want to be useful for God, I'll just show you some few things you have to do. Amen. First of all, if you want to represent a, a country, you have to be an ambassador, right? They have to teach you what to do. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says that we are ambassadors for Christ Jesus. God making his appeal through us. So you, as you sit here, you are what? An ambassador for Christ Jesus. See yourself as an ambassador for Christ Jesus. Amen. Say, I'm an ambassador. Yeah. Write your ambassador before you're the ambassador. Ambassador for Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, nobody regards you, but heaven sees you as an ambassador. Say, I'm an ambassador. The second Corinthians. Say, I'm an ambassador. Yeah. So you have to prepare yourself. Amen. And every ambassador is trained because he's going to represent a kingdom. He has to know what to do, what to say, how to do it. And even how to eat, if he doesn't like some food, he has to learn how to eat it. Because he's going to explain, stand for that kingdom, explain the kingdom's positions to other people, and represent the kingdom in everything. Amen. And we too, we have to prepare ourselves. Amen. Now, one of the things that we do in preparation is um, to pray. Learn how to pray. Amen. Prayer is just communicating with God. Prayer is talking with God. Amen. Hallelujah. And every Christian must know how to pray. You and God alone talking. Hey, it doesn't make sense. You are talking to the world. No, you are not talking to the world. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 that when you come to, before God, when you come before God, you should come with faith, believing that God exists and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. You should come believing that He exists. There is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. And every Christian must learn how to pray. Prayer is also fellowshipping with God. Just like I'm talking, even if you don't know God, how are you going to talk about God? Be alone with God. Amen. You have to be, know how to be alone with God. Amen. If you don't know how are you going to talk about God, you know, some people say, oh, he's my friend. Meanwhile, they don't know who they are talking about. Oh, yes, the person comes to the same country with you. It doesn't mean that it's your friend. Amen. You must know the person intimately. You can sit in a classroom and not know the person. Yeah, you can be in the same class with the person for 10 years and not know the person. You can work with the person and not know the person. Don't you see your, your workmates? You are just workmates. They, you don't know them. Just work colleagues. You just clock in and clock out. You don't know them. But you must learn how to spend quality time with the person. Amen. And in that case, spending quality time with God, along with God. Put off the television. Put off that series one and series two. And just learn to be alone with God. Amen. That is how to represent God. Say, I represent you a representative of God. Amen. There's nothing good on the TV anyway. And there's nothing good on the news anyway. Just when you see one, you, you see the news in the morning, don't look at it again until the evening. Because nothing's going to change, by the way. And it's all depressing, by the way. Spend more time with God. Amen. Are you there with me? Amen. We learned that Jesus Christ 
who was son, God's son. He spent time with God. Sometimes he went alone in the night to spend all night alone with God. Amen. Sometimes he went to spend all night alone with God. Amen. No wonder he was different. Hallelujah. When we used to have the flow, uh, flow prayer meeting going very late, early, I, used to, so I got to that mountain place where I, I took Ivan at 2 a.m. I've been driven there. When you are all snoring, you are, the, the bishop is preaching and you are sleeping. I've driven there because I know if I'm in my bed, I'll sleep. So I used to drive there when we were living in Samalin. I'll drive alone. I'll go and be in the mountain base there. Then I just imagine, I say, wow, this is what Jesus used to do. Wow. Beautiful. Just walking up and down like, wow, Jesus. You actually walk mountains like this. You walk in places like this. Just even if you can't do it, just learn to be alone with God and be prayerful. That's how you become a mighty man of God, a mighty one of God, and you transform. The Bible says, as we with unveiled faces behold the face of Christ Jesus, we are transformed from one degree of glory unto another. Amen. You must learn how to be a prayerful person. That's what's going to make a difference in your life as a minister. And by the way, I told you, you are all ambassadors for Christ Jesus. And you are kings and priests for Christ Jesus. Amen. He says, Christ is making his appeal through you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? Amen. So you must learn what? How to pray. Amen. Jesus spent 30 days and 30 nights. Moses went to spend 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. You see the difference? But you don't want to spend 30 minutes in front of God. Wow. Amen. Jesus told Peter and John, he said, must, you must watch. Uh, can you not watch it's an hour with me? You can't watch one hour. Just learn to watch one hour with God. Amen. These five minutes prayers don't count. These two minutes prayers don't count. You gotta go five minutes, ten more than five minutes, thirty minutes, one hour. Amen. And in that aqua for Pit Paul Paul says this way: men must always pray, lifting up all lifting up holy hands unto the Lord. Amen. Yesterday morning, many pastor was saying something very interesting that now with the mask, you can even pray behind the mask, nobody can see what you are doing. Yeah. You are at work, they say you put on a mask. Under the mask, you are doing shakato yabahaba, praying behind the mask. Nobody knows what you are doing. Amen. Every place is your prayer temple. My car is a moving temple. My car is my chapel. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are my car? 30 minutes driving is 30 minutes prayer. Yeah. If you want to be, yeah, if you want to just make it. I'm driving to work. That's prayer meeting. You and God alone. Amen. Sometimes you're in your car, you know, I used to be in my car, be just there, singing, worshiping, and someone is like, why well, is someone looking into my car and see what was going on? Because I had my hands raised and I was talking. You were trying to see if there's somebody else in my car. Yeah, there was somebody in my car. I've got Jesus with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to be a prayer person, prayer warrior. Anywhere. Anywhere. At work, at home, wherever it is. Amen. On the toilet, wherever you are. Just let you be in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a song we used to sing. We sing, I love to be in your presence. With your people praising you. That's what you ought to be. Amen. Be a prayer warrior. Say, I'll be a prayer warrior. Say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, you can't represent him. And how will you know him? By, by being with him. And how will you be with him? By being in prayer. Make time with Jesus. Amen. A little, a little prayer, a little talk with Jesus makes it all right, the songwriter said. Amen. Hallelujah. And you've got to know what the person thinks about. Because you're going to represent him, right? And everything that is here is here in the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. He said that all the, the secret things belong to our God. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to our God. But the things that he has chosen to reveal, I mean he has chosen to reveal, he has revealed to us. And where? It is here in this word. Amen. Hallelujah. The secret things belong to, unto our God. But the things which he has revealed, he has chosen to reveal, he has revealed to us and our children forever. That we may do all the works of his law. It's here. It's not hidden. It is here. You must search it. Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have life. Amen. And these are the words by which we live. Amen. Hallelujah. And then when God was giving a, a, an army general instruction, he told him, that is army general Joshua, he told him that this word of the Lord shall not depart from thy mouth. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 verse 9. Amen. He said, this, this, this word shall not depart out of thy mouth. But you shall seek to meditate upon it day and night. Amen. Hallelujah. You seek to meditate upon it day and night. And he said that you will do it. And he said you do it. He said this is the way, the secret to prosperity, to success. Amen. As you do it, he said you will make your way prosperous. And you will make your path. You have good success. Amen. So everybody get your big Bible, whether it's a physical one or it's on tablet, whatever it is, and just begin to apply yourself to it. And then you'll be able to know what to say to people and how to, what, 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 uh, how, how to handle yourself. Say amen. 
Say amen. I was just reading a scripture today. Let me see if I can find it. If it comes easily to me. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Verse number 6. Yes. After you've learned out Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. I read. It says, let your conversation be gracious and attractive. So that you will have the right response for everyone. Amen. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. I was reading the New Living Translation. Amen. Hallelujah. So you will know this. It will help you to live your life well. Amen. And you know how to represent God. Amen. You see, after church, we've been having something we call, we call understanding campaign. And currently, we've been studying something called school of apologetics. School of apologetics, knowing what you believe and how to tell somebody about it. Because there's so many people who don't know about Jesus. There's so people who are confused. And you should have the light, the truth, to tell them. And the truth is in the word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And Jesus is the word of God. You got to know the word. Say, I got to know the word. Say, I got to know the word. I got to know the word. Ezra chapter 7, verse number 10. Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. Amen. Ezra chapter 7, verse 10 says that, And for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach it in Israel. Amen. Statutes and judgments. You gotta learn it. Amen. That's how to represent God. Say, I'll be uh, representing God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of uh, Malachi chapter 2, it says, The prophet's lips shall keep knowledge. Your lips should keep knowledge. And where? The knowledge must come from the word of God. Amen. Because people are coming to you to come and inquire things from you. He said, this was it. If this, uh, the prophet said, should keep knowledge. Let me find it and read it for you. Amen. He uh -huh. said, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. You are the messenger of who? I said, you are what? You are what? A messenger of God most high. Amen. What a blessing. Say what a blessing. When Gabriel came to, uh, 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 what's his name? Eli. No, not Eli. What's the name again? John's father. What's John's father's name again? Zechariah. He's, he said, I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God. Yeah. He told the same to Mary. I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God. It's to say, I'm bringing you word from God. You two stand in the presence of God and bring word to people. Say, I'll bring word to people. I, I said, I'll bring word. I'll bring the word of God to some people. Say amen, somebody. Say amen. Are you happy? Bro, are you happy? Listen, I'm giving you the best employment. Auntie. Is that Auntie Vicky? Oh, my glasses. The pastor says I should go get my glasses back. Forget. <laughs> don't tell the pastor I call somebody. No, don't tell the pastor, okay? She says I should go get my glasses. I can see some people. Hey, are you there? Yeah. They must learn how to. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, 2 says that and all the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others Amen Are you with me? This part of your preparation for the gospel for, for the ministry, for the work the things you have learned from me amongst many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men even as we are here right now if you are taking notes the things I'm committing to you, Paul says, the things you've heard of me, amongst many witnesses, the same commit. Just take the same thing and go and commit to somebody. Amen. That's it. Just commit the same words of God. Just commit to somebody. Amen. And you'll see what God is going to do for you. The same thing is going to happen to you. Indeed, when uh, my friend Elisha was at the, the other day, was at the Jericho River. You know my friend Elisha? You haven't met him before. My friend Elisha, one day he was at Jericho, the river Jericho, the uh, river Jordan. You be there one day, say, I'll be there. Yeah, you see Jordan yourself. He was at the Jordan River. And then when he got there, and he, there, there was a lot of water. He said, where be the God of Elijah? He said, where be God, the God of Elijah? Then he took the mantle and struck the water. The same thing he had seen his master do is what he did. And he saw the same miracles occurring. And that's the same thing you're going to see. The words that you've heard is the same thing you go and preach amongst the people. And people will be saved. Miracles we are carrying. I'm telling you, as you sit here right now, God wants to empower you to do something great in Las Vegas. Change somebody's life, bring salvation to somebody's life, bring healing to somebody's life, bring deliverance to somebody's life. I can't wait for the day when, just like Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 10, when he sent the people out of the 70, they came back with great testimonies. 
talking about the great things that God has done. And I'm waiting for that day. It's going to happen practically when you will come with testimony. I said, when who? You will come with testimonies and declare the great things that God has done through you for somebody. Say amen, somebody. Do you believe these things? You, you, you. I said you, not somebody. Say me. Not somebody else. Say me. I'll do great things. My destiny is to do great things for God. My destiny is to do great things for God. My destiny is to do great things for God. And it will happen to you, everyone that believes in the name of Jesus. Say amen. So prepare yourself for ministry. Amen. It will take time, but just do it. And you see great things that God will do for you. Amen. Little things grow. Just do it in little ways. Amen. Take every opportunity that you have given to you to do the work of God. Anything. We have Basenta now. Go to the Basenta meetings. One day you have a Basenta that you'll be leading, teaching people, talking to them, praying for them. And that's the way you will go to the forward. It will go forward. Amen. So every opportunity you have in the house of God, just take it and do it. Every opportunity to serve God, just do it. Say, I'll do it. Amen. Don't just take it for granted and say it's little. When Joseph, when David was watching the sheep of his father, his brothers were laughing at him. They said, where are those few sheep that was given to you? Listen, the man was learning how to be the shepherd of Israel. And from the few sheep that he was guiding and guarding and watching, he became a shepherd of Israel. From that few sheep, he was able to write Psalm 23 that we've all been singing and reading from then till now. But the brothers were ridiculing him and saying the few sheep. But he was doing something great. He was being prepared for a great service. Amen. When David grew up a little bit, he became a, a violinist in the house of King Saul. He was being prepared for big service. He was in the house of the king. He learned how to be a king. When it was time to be king, he didn't need to go to school again. He had already learned it just by being a, a violinist, a musician in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So don't take it for granted the things you are supposed to do. Elijah was pouring water on the hands of Elijah. Meanwhile, he was in school. Elisha, why are you? Are you a slave? Are you a servant? Why are you pouring water on the hands of the man? He's just a man. But when the time came and he was, they were looking for a prophet, a man, they said, here is Elisha, the one who is to pour water on the hands of Elijah, the, the prophet. And he began to do the miracles that Elijah used to do. In actual fact, he did two times the miracles Elijah did just by being a servant boy. Peter, John, Andrew, James, they used to share bread in Jesus' church and gather people and help them. But when they left, they became the pillars of the church. And in the New Jerusalem, they are there. The Bible said they, the foundations are the 12, the 12 brothers, the 12 sons of Jacob. Uh, Jacob. And the walls, they are the, the pearls, all after the 12, the 12 disciples. Amen. God is going to do something great with you. Amen. Daniel, they just were grouped by some people. They were just small boys, small boys. Before he became a prime minister. Joseph, the same way. Amen. So every little thing that God wants to do with you, please just allow him. You are in the training ground. Don't seek to be on top. Just learn to go through the process. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're blessed. The deacons in the book of Acts chapter 6, they were sharing bread and fish. But the first Christian martyr was Stephen. The first great, real great Christian evangelist was not Peter, was not John, was not Paul, uh, was, not, was not even Paul. It was, uh, it was uh, Brother Philip. Amen. Hallelujah. Who was just sharing bread. Whatever little work you have to do in the house of God, just do it. Amen. Hallelujah. God is training you for something great. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bishop talked about how he used to play drums in the particular church. And by that he learned how to do music. And now he knows a lot of music. By just learning how to play drums. In the church. Amen. Number two. Anybody who wants to practice this compelling power, he said, compel them to come. To compel people to come to God, to church. You must not, you must not, you don't keep yourself to yourself. Amen. But you influence and affect many people. Amen. You see, Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth. Amen. He said, if the salt loses its taste, it has no use than to be cut down, to be thrown down, and to be trodden underfoot. Amen. Are you there with me? That's Matthew chapter 6. He said, if salt, you are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill cannot be hid. 
So do not men do not light a candle and put it under a bushel, but they put it on the they, they put on the on the candlestick so everybody will see. Amen. He said, let you, you must let, let your words you shine. Therefore, we should shine. We we'll let all men see our good works that will glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. Then he said, you are the salt of the earth. They said, if salt loses its taste, it has no use than to be put down and to be trodden on the foot. Amen. When the salt, the tastiness has gone, may your tastiness never go. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. You are supposed to influence the world. The world is not supposed to influence you. Amen. I said, you are supposed to make a difference in the world. The world is not supposed to make a difference in you. Amen. Wherever you go, the place must change. Concerning Peter and um, a brother Barnabas, no, it was Silas. He said, those people that have changed the world have come to this place. He said, they, that, those people that have changed the world have come to this place. They heard that Paul and Silas have arrived in town. They said, the people that have changed the, world, the place, they have come down. When you go to some place, may there be an earthquake. May they both say that this person has still changed places, has come here too. May demons be scared when they see you coming. May they say he is coming and then there will be a helter skelter in the kingdom of darkness because you have arrived. You are the source of the earth. You are the light of the earth. You must influence the people. Amen. Listen, we have gone past the days of hermits just hiding in the monastery. You are supposed to, this is where you are supposed to shine. Amen. You are supposed to be there. They should see your light and glorify your father. They must hear your gracious words. They must hear, see your life and give praise to God. And your life must convict them. Amen. The book of uh, Jude, is it Jude? Says, righteous, said, righteous Lord, righteous Lord, righteous Lord was living in Sodom. And the Bible said he was, he was vexed by what he saw. He was vexed. But righteous Lord was there as a testimony to the people of Sodom. Amen. And you are just like righteous Lord in Las Vegas. Amen. He says, Sin City, you are Lord. I said, they say, say, city, you are a lot and you will influence people in Las Vegas. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Righteous lot. Righteous lot. Righteous lot. Righteous lot. Just lot. Amen. Hallelujah. Say amen, somebody. Say amen. Hallelujah. So we must make a difference. Don't be an antisocial person. Don't let the world influence you. We are in the world, but we are not in the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Even when Jesus was praying, he said, I pray for these people. I pray for them. They are not of the world. You are not of the world. You are living the world, but you are not of the world. Amen. Don't let the world influence you. Influence the world. Hallelujah. I said, don't let the world influence you. You must influence the world. Amen. So don't be an antisocial person. How would the poor hear about Jesus? Except you are there. Don't go and hide in your cabinet and say, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. Your place is to be with them, to tell them about Jesus. Nevertheless, don't be corrupted by them. Just like righteous Lord, like just Lord. Don't be corrupted by them. May your soul be vexed by all the sins you see, but don't be annoyed with the people that have sinned. Jesus loves the sinner, and you must love them too. And we must tell them about Jesus. Say, I'll tell them about Jesus. Say, Amen. Hallelujah. You always believe that some good, you have to believe and tell people, Amen. Hallelujah. And tell them about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just be, stand up and be bold for Jesus. Let the world see. Let the world hear that you belong to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Isaiah chapter 55. Jesus say, uh, says, My word that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall accomplish that which I please. Anything that you speak about God, it is the word of God. It shall bring salvation and bring deliverance. If people hear and they don't believe, you have done your part. Jesus one day told the disciples, he said, when you go to a place and you preach and they don't mind you, just the dust from your feet, just put it on the ground as a witness against them. Amen. And the book of Ezekiel says that when you tell the sinner about his sins and he doesn't repent, you have done your best. You have saved your soul. That person is going to answer for his life or his soul. Your hands will be clean. But if you don't do that, you will be blood guilty. And I don't want you to be blood, blood guilty. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three step. We are moving quickly. Anyone practicing anadea, anakazo, is not prepared to cancel the service. You know, when I come to church, I want you to be here and I want the place before. But even if I come here and there are three people, I have church service. I'm telling you the truth. If I come here and there are three people sitting here, oh, oh Reverend says if you are three people, you will have church, so I won't go to church. Don't do that to yourself. I'm just telling you something. I'm telling you that in my mind, 
I have decided I will never cancel a church service. I will never cancel a church meeting. Even if it is me alone, I will be there. Amen. Hallelujah. Because anytime we are together, I believe the power of God is present. The Bible said the power of Jesus was preaching somewhere and the power of God was present to heal. Amen. Hallelujah. So anytime we gather together, the power of God is there. Whether it's raining or sunny, whatever it is, God is there. I will never cancel a church service. And we never cancel any church service anywhere. Even the Basenta meetings we are having, never cancel a Basenta meeting. Because God is there. Amen. It's an appointment with God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's an appointment with God. And God is a very important person. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So never, we never cancel church services, whether you come or not. But I want you to come. Say, I want you to come. Say, hey, Reverend, say, I come or not. It's good after service. Listen, it's for your good that you come. Amen. But we decide to have it. Amen. I told you the story last week or whatever I told you, maybe two weeks ago, about a young man one day in New York and um, it has snowed a lot. <laughs> I don't miss digging snow, you know. <laughs> one thing I don't like is digging snow. Hey, I remember shoveling snow. I had a snow blower and a snow like, oh boy, your nose be running, your hands are free- freezing, your feet are freezing. <laughs> but people still like to be in New York or Boston. What a shock. It's so nice. Last time I went to New York, I went as a tourist. It was beautiful. Wow. Yeah. We had a, a, a backpack. Joshua had his backpack. Chris had a backpack. Lady Pastor had a backpack. And we, we strolled in the city. We had a good time. Hey! Because we didn't care about anything. We don't care about the traffic. We didn't care about the snow. We just wanted to have a good time. Hey! But I remember that day when it had snowed a lot. First, let me go to Bishop Eddie. One day, Bishop Eddie. Oh, Bishop Eddie. I hope one day he will come to us. Bishop Eddie, my friend Bishop Eddie. He always tells me he will come, but he hasn't come. I pray that one day he comes. Bishop Eddie is one of Bishop Dad's um, able assistants from 1982 till now. And um, when the church started, Bishop Eddie was in New York after Bishop came and left. And Bishop Eddie was looking for church members, you know, <laughs> trying to start a church. So one day he called, he said he was going to pick somebody up. And the person said, come. <laughs> the person said, take left, right, left, right, left. Before he was aware, he had driven from Manhattan, entered the New Jersey Turnpike, and he was going. He went and went to SA2. SA2 is almost into Delaware. He was going to pick a church member. <laughs> it has slowed. He turned right, turned left, turned right, turned left, turned right. <laughs> then he got to the place. The person said, I won't come. Oh, I mean, he, by the time he came back to Manhattan, the church people had closed the church service. <laughs> I don't know who started me, Bishop Reverend Charles, but I'm done the church service that day. But when he came back, church was over. The, the pastor had missed church. But what was he doing? He was just going to look for one soul. Just one soul. Drove, drove more than 19 miles looking for this person. When he got the person, said, I don't feel like going to church. Oh! One day, me too, I died in the snow. It's a very snowy day. Oh! Having church in our basement, where we had church in the beginning in New York, in our church in Queens. And I, 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 I called the boy. I, church, church time. He didn't mind me. Then I drove. I woke up at 6 a.m. to clear the snow. My hands were freezing, my face, my everything. And I drove there. And I parked behind the house. I called. He asked me, Pastor, have you looked outside? I said, yes, I've looked outside. It has snowed very heavily. I said, yes. And I'm right outside your window. Because he was going to tell me that it has no so no church. I said, I'm right behind your window. Come out. And he came out. I could have made a nice excuse. It has snowed and been home. No. I cleared the snow, made a way for him, and I went and put them in the car and brought him. And last week I was telling you about how, how my wife, uh, I said my wife, Priscilla went to bring those girls. Where are the girls? I think they're here. Where are they today? Eh, I see you. Where are your sisters? Where are your sisters? Where are they? My, my favorite twins. <laughs> After Priscilla, after Sylvia in uh, Silver, because they beat me up. They are not twins. They are not twins. When Priscilla went to pick him up, and they were running, they told me they told me the story better last week. They said they went to hide in some bush, and somebody pointed them out. The person said, "There they are." And little Priscilla went into the bush. It, it came to the bush, right? Yeah, she went to the bush, grabbed one, grabbed left, and pulled them in the car and said, "Sit down. We are going to church." <laughs> And they came to church. And now they, they are in church. At least they are enjoying. Thanks, thanks be to God for Priscilla. Do you miss her? Oh, you have to call her and tell her you love her. 
She said, sit down in the car. They were crying. They cried all the way to church here. Yeah. Because she was not going to church without them. And that's what we have to do. In the book of Jude, Jude it says that rescue some as though from fire. Snatch them. Benihim. Benihim. The way Benihim became a preacher. He said he had a vision of, Jesus showed him a vision. And people go to hell. He saw a vision. He saw people marching into the fire. Like, woo, into the fire, into the fire, into the fire. That is how he became a preacher man. I don't think he wanted to do it. He was shown a vision. People were, woo, into the fire, into the fire. And like, will you do it for me? Will you rescue them? And that's how he became who he was, a preacher. And that saved with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating them in the garments spotted by the flesh. No excuse. I said what? No excuse. We are not closing church because it's hot. Thank you, God. Thank you, folks, for coming to church when it's hot. No matter. Hey, Reverend, it's very hot. I'm going to die. But when you are in the house, you don't die. When you are in the market that during the summer, you don't die. But when you are supposed to come to church, you will die. Hey, yeah, you will die. Listen, all those excuses must go. We are not closing church because of anything. That's why we, I mean, during the COVID, we still try during the COVID to have church service by Zoom. Because people have said, hey, COVID has come. No, no more church. Zoom helped us. Amen. Hallelujah. And now we are getting out of Zoom. Amen. Unless you have to be in Zoom. Amen. Somebody. Amen. So when we practice this, we don't close church. We don't stop things. Amen. Hallelujah. We will go out and invite people. Sunday is for God. Midweek, your basanta time is for God. Just give God the time. We are not canceling anything for anybody. Say amen. We obey and God will bless us. Amen. Physically, we'll bring people to church. We'll bust them. We'll bring them. I don't have a car. Go and pick the person and bring the person. Yeah. I don't know that right there is. You provide a way. Make a way for the person. In the Ghana, they actually try to bring the people to church. Busting them, taxiing them, whatever way to bring them to church. Because a soul is a soul is a soul and it's precious to God. We are snatching some as though from the fire. If only you could see hell, you will be following with me. If you could see hell, you will be saying, Reverend, we should do this every Sunday. Because there are many people, we don't know whether they will meet the next Sunday. Amen, somebody. Amen. We are not prepared to have an empty meeting. We want to have many people here. Amen. One day Bishop went to the school of uh, med- uh, nursing school and clapped and brought them in. It's nice to have a good thing. I want my, my choir to be back full stream. I want my, my, my sing, my, 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 my praise and worship to be back full stream. I want a full church. God wants his house to be full. Hey, you think God likes a, a empty church? God likes small choir? God do, do likes mighty choir. In heaven, when you look at the choir in heaven, it's a very mighty, mighty choir. Hey, myriads and myriads of angels singing. So we must have a mighty choir. We must have a mighty, uh, uh, what do you call it, ushering team. We must have a mighty, mighty praise, prayer team. Amen. We must have everything coming back alive. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to resurrect our prayer, our prayer force. Amen. Are you there with me? Every part of the body must be resurrected. We don't want any part of the body to be faint or weak. Amen. Listen. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that that which every joint supplies, uniform growth, that's what we're talking about, uniform growth, that every part of the body will be growing, the prayer groups will be growing, the music, the, the praise and worship will be growing, the choir will be growing, everybody actually will be growing, airport stars growing, film stars growing, dancing stars growing, every part of the body will be growing, but you will make it grow, amen, by you joining and you getting people to be involved, say amen, somebody, and the God we praise, say God we praise, say amen, somebody, Amen. Hallelujah. So let's do this for Jesus. Whatever it takes, don't broadcast. We can't do bomb broadcast in Ghana. We should don't broadcast. You wake up and go and start preaching your neighborhood. If you do it here, they will call the police after you. <laughs> but whatever means we can do, let's do it. In the parks, let's tell people about Jesus. Coming up soon, uh, Sister Lydia and Co. have organized a nice, nice outreach for us. It's going to be in one of the parks. What is the park again? Bring it up. They're going to have a beautiful time one of the parks. Just ask. This is just to jump start us into those things of reaching out to people. It's going to be in one of the parks. I don't know where the park is. Go music, dancing, barbecue. People like free food, you know? Make free food for them. Invite them to come and eat. And when they come, we sing for them, we dance, and we preach the word of God. We are not a social group to go and just give them food. No, no, no. I'm not a salvation army. Salvation army is supposed to preach the word of God anyway. But we're not going there to give them food. We are going there to tell them about Jesus. The food is just to attract them. Amen. So we're doing more of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Evangelism. Reaching out. That's beautiful. A soul is a soul outreach. This is just the beginning for, for this time. They will do more. Amen. 
Even the percentage groups you have, every percentage group is supposed to grow. You're supposed to reach out to people, your neighborhood, your friends. Tell them about Jesus and they preach Christ. Say they preach Christ. Amen. Number four, the person who wants to make the place grow, the God's church grow, is not overcome by, is over, by people's excuses. The people say, somebody said, I have bought oxen. I'm going to test it. Do you test your oxen in the night? You do that in the afternoon. Go and look at your farm in the afternoon. Don't look at your farm in the night. No. Somebody said, I have just gotten married. I told the story about a, a, a pastor who was, I was invited to come and preach here. And I told the pastor, I'm going to foot your bill, fly you from your city and host you. And he said, hey, I'll think about it. Then the lecturer told me, my wife's birthday. What an excuse. And I told him, bring your wife. We'll celebrate your wife for you. He still didn't bring his wife. What an excuse. Amen. Later on, he was asking me, can I come? I said, no, we won't come anymore. Because your time is past. His excuse was very, very, very big. And we all make those excuses. We tell Jesus so many things. Some people who are not married now will say, I want, eh, eh, I'm not married, so when I get married, then I'll come. Then when they get married, my husband did this, my wife said this. Then I, oh, I have children. My children, hey, my children are coughing. Listen, forget about that. You don't know when your hour is coming. No more excuses. Amen. And let's overcome excuses by people. Tell them you can do it. Say, oh, <laughs> when I, I, I'm pregnant, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I come to church and I see blue, I vomit. Tell me, if you are going to vomit, I'll give you fencyclidin. I'll give you something to prevent your vomiting. Amen. Overcome people's excuses. Amen. They'll be very happy. You'll be very happy they did. You did. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, every good minister, every good ambassador, and you are a good ambassador, say, I'm a good ambassador, m must not be overcome well by people's excuses. Amen. You must learn to overcome people's excuses. Even as you tell them about God, people will form excuses in their minds. They will develop reasons why they will not obey the word of God. Even as you tell people to come to church on this next Easter Friday, or Easter Sunday, or this coming Sunday, or any other day, as you tell them to come to your bus center meeting, they will give you excuses, but you must be ready to battle them with excuses, okay? They don't want to obey the word of God. That's simple and short. We'll pray to God. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. They're pulling down strongholds, casting down every imagination. You have to pray against the mindset of people to change it. You have to pray that their eyes will see that what they are being called into is a good thing. Say amen, somebody. We must overcome those excuses. And we will overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every good preacher, every good Christian must learn to preach against people's excuses and ideas. Jesus always preached against and posed reasons and excuses. Amen. Luke chapter 20 verse 19. At one time, Jesus could tell that the people knew that he was speaking the parable against them. You too can tell when people are trying to battle with you against the word of God. Be a prayerful person. Listen, from now on, from today, if you didn't know, I've told you who you are. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. You are an ambassador for Christ Jesus. God is making his appeal through you. Pray to God that you'll be able to stand as a good representative of Christ Jesus. And above all, bring many people to salvation. Bring many people from darkness into light. And bring many people to the kingdom of heaven. One day, you'll realize that this is the best message you ever had in your life. Not money. Not about houses. This is the great message of God. We will preach Christ. Him crucified. Him resurrected. Him ascended. And Him coming again. And we will bring people to Jesus. Amen. Somebody put your hands together and let's rise up in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray to God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, God. We will give you praise, O oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration and all the thanksgiving. We worship you and we exalt you. Our Lord, our God, our maker. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We will give ourselves no rest. Till your kingdom comes on earth, you position watchmen on the walls. Now our prayers will flow like tears, for you shared your heart with us. God of heaven, on our knees we fall. Knocking, knocking on the door. 
praying for the generation. We're praying for your name to be known in all of the earth. We're watching, watching on the wall to see you. We're looking, looking for a time for breakthrough. We're praying for your word to bear fruit in all of the earth. In all of the earth. We're knocking, knocking on the door of heaven. We're crying, crying for the generation. We pray for your name to be known. In all of the earth. We're watching, watching on the wall to see you. We're looking, looking for a time of breakthrough. We're praying for your word to bear fruit. Watching on the walls to see you. We're looking, looking for a time of breakthrough. We're praying for your word to bear fruit in all of the end. In all of the end. Just pray for yourself for the moment and say, Lord, make me fruitful in your house. Make me fruitful in your kingdom. Use me to bring many to salvation, many to the light of your kingdom. Help me to deliver people from darkness, deliver people from hell into eternity. And even as we are gathered here, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, it's appointed unto men once to die and after that judgment. You want to say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, forgive me my sins, and come and live in my heart. I choose you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I receive you, Jesus, into my heart. Thank you. They say, Satan, I reject you. Satan, I reject you. Satan, I reject you. You are not my friend. I choose Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. And with every head bowed down, if you want, you said this prayer with me, just lift up your hands and we'll pray with you again. You are here and you prayed this prayer and you made it with sincerity. I want you to lift up your hand with every head bowed down, every eye closed. You want to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, thank you for your sons and your daughters in the house right now. We give you all the praise and glory. Amen. All right, communion time. Get your communion, your sacraments as we celebrate the holy time in the presence of God. Get your bread and we flow with that. Amen. This song, Take My Life. I think all of us know how to sing it. Lift your hands.
Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ. Take the wine. Thanks Lord for healing and forgiveness that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. your hands for your blessing. May the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. May power come into your life from now and forever. Receive power. Whatever is a problem, receive a solution through faith. Let the power of God come to bear in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Be blessed. Receive answers. Receive healing. Receive deliverance from devils. I release the force and the power of faith to flow into your life against every high thing that is wicked, that is operating in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen whatever tormented you harassed you and accused you may it be smashed and demolished by power through faith in Jesus name Amen God bless you you may be seated Amen Amen right before I sit down we just go to a small book launch just here Amen 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 Hallelujah. Are you here with me? Can take pictures. All right. Beautiful. So, we are blessed in our church uh, by, you know, Paul had a son. Not his own son. So when he's coming, bring him to, uh, ask him to bring the parchments. Parchments are writings. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we have parchments. Books that our prophet has written. Amen. And they are based on the word of God. Amen. Are you, are you here with me? Yeah. And we tell people that people say, oh, why are we reading this thing? These are based on the word of God. Amen. And I tell people, some people who say, why are you reading? That if they can tell me all the scriptures in even this simple book, I, I'll put a book down. God, people don't know even the scriptures, but they will accuse and they will say also funny things. Amen. It's okay, sister. Sister, chill for now. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this is one of the books our prophets has written. Many, many books. Many, many, many books. Amen. And once you read them, we always say when you are reading them, read this first. Amen. If, if I know it's the all Bible, if this is not here, throw it away. But you find that it's all here. Amen. And you use it to help you, guide you. Amen. Talk about the Apostles' Doctrines, the book of Acts. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. I said amen. So, 
We are just we read these books, we teach from them because they are the apostles' doctrines, our apostles that God has given to us. Amen. And it's a good thing to read. Rather than read reading mills and booms. I don't know what books are there now. Lady Pastor used to read mills and booms when he was, she was a little girl. Harry Potter. This is reading Harry Potter. Read this one. Amen. Have this in your bathroom. This is reading something from Oprah Winfrey. Read this based on the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So they are good books. The second thing we do is that when Prophet goes to the Healing Jesus campaigns, he actually gives this out for free. He gives them for free. Amen. Hallelujah. So we actually end up supporting it. It's a good thing to support. Amen. I, oh, you're not happy. You're not happy. Oh, you're not showing your excitement. I said we get to support that work that he's doing for God. Amen. So what we are going to do right now is to launch these books. Like I said, North America is being launched in only our church, Apostles Church and uh, Bishop Henry's Church. Amen. So you are privileged to have this in North America. It's what we'll see now. They're very envious that we have this book. Amen. So we're going to launch it like we launched the other book. Amen. And then you come for it. Some people came for the other book. The other book was, what was the book again? How can I say thanks? But this is fruitfulness. Amen. Fruitfulness. What does it teach us? That God wants us to be fruitful. That's what we're talking about. God is looking for fruits. And that's what we talk about in our church. We're not talking about money. Amen. God is looking for us to be fruitful. And when you go to heaven, you'll be very glad you had this book. Amen. So before I left, there were 10. So I took mine before. Last time I didn't have mine. So this time I took mine and hid it with me. So there will be only nine left here. Amen. Are you there with me? Oh, you're not happy. Is it good I took mine? This time I took mine. Amen. And um, I'm going to pay a thousand dollars for it. Amen. Oh, you're not happy. Oh, I should pay more for it. I should pay more for it. <coughs> Let me pass Try it out with a thousand. That's fine. Good. Beautiful. So I'm paying a thousand dollars for it. If you also want it for a thousand dollars, you can come for it. Amen. It's a blessing. It's a gift unto God. It's not, we are not selling the book to you as the price of the book. The price is cheaper than that. It's just trying to help with the Healing Jesus campaign, with the work of the ministry. Amen. Just a contribution to it. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you can and you want, you can come for this for a thousand dollars. It's not a sale, but it's just to help the work. Amen. Thousand dollars. Eight hundred. Okay, let's go. Nine hundred. <laughs> Eight hundred. 700, we're coming down slowly. 600, am I too fast? Okay, 500, I stopped. 500, Las Vegas, one day, maybe you come for 2,000. Okay, 450, 400, 350, I was still for 10. When I get to, I won't tell you why I'll, I'll stop. 300, <laughs> 250, 200, oh, 250, beautiful. Beautiful. One day you'll be, you'll be coming for 3,000. Amen. God bless you, my dear. Amen. I'll pray for you. Amen. Don't worry. You think you're fools? They're not fools. Wow. Robbie, this time you got your own book. <laughs> this time you got a book, right? Beautiful. Okay. Amen. You know, the one said, Give and it shall be given to you. You'll be surprised. One day we're at a camp meeting. Bishop asked for some money, um, something for healing Jesus campaign. When we were getting up, Sister Lydia was laughing at me. She said uh, she was afraid for me. And I told her she should be afraid for herself. Because I got more back than what I gave. Amen. So what were you? Three, what was the 350? What were we? 250. Okay. Two, uh, 250 was where I am. Okay. 200. And the books are getting finished. 200. Hey, nobody's coming. Okay. 200. 200. 200. 175. 150. Okay, 100. Maybe I should go to 100. 100. What? Oh, what do you see? 200. Maybe I say, what are you coming for? 100. Okay, I'll go back up. <laughs> I'm going back up. I'm going back up. Yeah, you are coming. I'm going back up. Okay, I'll give you 100. I'm going back up. <laughs> Okay. Beautiful. I'll pray for you all again. Okay, two more for the hundred. If I go to fifty, you fight about it. Hundred. If I go to fifty, you fight about the fifty, so I won't go fifty. <laughs> Blessings. Last one. 
Beautiful. Okay, come back and we pray for you, and then I'll go and sit down. Amen. Not picking mine already. You all come, let me pray for you. Beautiful. Those who got a book, if you didn't get a book, don't come. Please get my wallet. Wow, what a blessing. Someone say, what a blessing. <laughs> Amen. Just let me pray for you. Just kneel down quickly, let me pray for you. Kneel quickly, let me pray for you quickly. Just let me, if you can. Okay, just, just a quick one. Who's behind? Father, I thank you for your daughter. Thank you for blessing her. Just bless, 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 bless your daughter, Lord. Bless, bless them as they are given to you, Lord Jesus. They give to you and you give back to them. Good measure, press down, shake it together. May the Lord bless. And may the Lord add unto you. May the Lord increase you on every side. May he multiply your seed. May the Lord multiply your seed. Amen. People, clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 All right, let's put our hands together for the Lord. We thank God for this morning. And we thank God for the privilege. Thank God for the privilege He has given us to be in His presence. Thank God for the privilege He has given us for being in His presence. We are going to take our tithes and then we'll be leaving. Um, So if you have your tithe, please. Yeah, please bring your tithes. You are worthy to be praised. You deserve the past. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Let's lift it up before the Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You deserve the best. 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 Please lift up your tithe to the Lord Jesus. Lift your tithe up to the Lord. Speak unto the Lord about your tithe. Oh, sing for me, please. You deserve the best. 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 Are you speaking to the Lord about your time? I should honor you with my tithes and you open the windows of heaven and you bless me so here I am with my tithe I'm doing my part may you also open the windows of heaven may you also honor me according to your word according to your word may you honor lift your tithe up to the Lord and speak to the Lord say Lord here I am with my tithe remember me send angels to bring me my answers here I am with my tithe Lord make a way 
for me where there seems to be no way. According to your word, may this tithe be acceptable to you, Lord, like the offering and the sacrifice of Abel. May you receive it and may you bless me as I've come before you today with my tithe. Inhale it, Lord, as a sweet smelling fragrance. Inhale it as a sweet smelling fragrance. May it be acceptable to you. May you be pleased and may you open the windows of heaven upon my life, upon my health, upon my finances, upon every need that I have. Make a way. Move things around for me, Lord. Black closed doors that need to be closed. You are the one who shuts and nobody can open. Open doors for me that no man can shut. Because you are the one who opens and no man can shut. Today, bless, bless, bless. Receive it, Lord. Receive it, Lord. Let it be acceptable. Receive it, Lord. Continue to bless. Continue to open the windows of heaven. Receive, Lord. Receive it, Lord. Receive it, Lord. Receive it, Lord. Receive it, Lord. Receive it and bless. Receive it and bless, Lord. Receive it and answer, Lord. Let it be acceptable to you, Lord. Receive it and bless, Lord. Receive it and open the windows of heaven. Receive it, O oh God. Receive it, O oh God. Receive. Let it be acceptable to you, Lord. Bless, Lord. Receive and bless, Lord. Receive and bless, Lord. Let it be acceptable to you, Lord. Let the windows of heaven open as you receive it. Angelic visitations as the Lord receives it. May the Lord visit you like he visited Cornelius and bless you. May the Lord receive it and may the Lord bless you. Father, let it be acceptable to you. We thank you for the opportunity for bringing our unrighteous mammon into your house. Let it be acceptable to you. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God always blesses and is faithful to his word. Amen. All right. So let's, uh, next Sunday, is that Easter? Great. So next Sunday, I need one person to give their name to Ivan for a testimony about tithes. Do we have any testimonies about tithing? Do we have testimony about tithing? I need one person to give their name to Ivan for next week. All right? For tithing. I can't give mine for security reasons. So somebody else should give theirs. <laughs> I have a big one, but for security reasons, somebody else should give their, their testimony, please. All right? So on April the se- oh, birthday, should we do birthday first? Birthday, any birthday, please? Any birthday from Monday to today? No birthdays? All right. Wow. So that's the month, month of what? April, May, March? So nobody was born in March, nobody is born. First week of April. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. No problem. Uh, what were we going to do? What was the next thing? The what? The announcement. Okay. So on um, April 17th, which is Easter Sunday, it is also our Swollen Sunday. Amen. Swollen Sunday means we want to swell up the place with our numbers. Amen. For God, for the Lord. So we want everybody to invite people. More importantly, everybody should bring one person. Is that possible? At least one person. Is that possible? So we are going to arrange the chairs in twos. So until now, there will be a chair next to you. Mr. Pauline, there will be a chair next to you. Don't make the two chairs empty because I put one beside you. You understand? So you and the person, don't let, don't, don't dash because you say, I'm going to sit down, empty chair beside me. Come. But bring one person to sit by you, one person to sit by you. Amen. You got it? Can we do it? Yeah. One, only one. Tata Claudine, only one. As for you, you can bring 20. So when you come, you give people some. Those whose chairs are empty, you fill their chairs for them. All right? So everybody try and bring one person. So we are going to double up all the chairs. Two chairs, two. Every chair you sit on, 
you go and have a chair beside you and bring one. So we have two weeks to invite the people. Is that possible? And it's going to be Easter Sunday, the day that we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. So we are going to wear white. If you have anything white, just wear anything white. All right? And if you don't have, that's not a reason not to come. Just wear whatever you have and come. Amen. So we're going to wear white. Bring your white handkerchiefs and we are going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Amen. I mean, did I say birth? It means every day is Christmas. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are going to invite people. And what we are going to do is introduce people to Jesus when they come, we're going to introduce them to Jesus. We're going to lead them to Christ and uh, set them up on their way to making it to heaven. Amen. Like Reverend said, every day people are leaving. People are dying. Amen. Do you know we've lost another person in Las Vegas? We've lost another person in Las Vegas. So we have to, um, you know, bring people to Christ as fast as we can. Amen. Is it a good plan? Yeah. Why, why, why are you all looking so sad? Are we okay? Is it a good plan? Oh, okay. I wasn't getting response, so I thought you were sad. All right, so everybody will bring at least one person. Where are the flyers? Okay, so Uncle Francis, give everybody flyers. Give it to everybody. Just give everybody. Put it everywhere, anywhere, everybody. Quick, 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 please. Just share it to everybody. Give everybody some. And that's it. Please make sure you have one or two or three. You can take a picture of it. Make it your WhatsApp status. Right? Am I right? Can it be done? So take a picture of it, make it your white, uh, WhatsApp status, post it on your platforms where you are members, right? Your platform groups, and also send it to your relatives, amen, and your friends. Please give it to everybody. Those of your friends who are not in the city, they can join us by Zoom that day. Not you, you don't join, you come. But your friend, your cousin in Germany, and all your friends outside the country, they can join by Zoom. Please lift your hand if you don't have a flyer. If you don't have a flyer, can I see you by hand? If you don't have a flyer, can I see it by hand? My hand is up. Children, you can give it to your classmates. You can give everybody. I don't have any. Thank you. Amen. All right, does everybody have? I think Robert, gave, Francis, Robert gave only one each. Give them more, please. Uh huh. Share. Don't take any back. Share. Share to everybody. Cecilia, you look like you have only one. Ah, this woman, she knows the whole Las Vegas. Can you give her a bow? Give a pal to Auntie Cecilia for me. Give her some. You know only three people in Las Vegas. You know only three people. Aha, you see? You know people. She knows people. She's a very powerful woman, this one. Auntie Mary to give her a pal. Ah, Francis, give them to her. Give everything to her. Give it to her. And give the rest to Claudine. I don't know what you want to do with the prize, Francis. Give Okay. Did you give ah, Auntie Naomi and Mr. Prince? They need a pa. Auntie Naomi, where is yours? One? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. These are the people who were here before we they know every this is where they run for mayor. They will want will win right now. Mr. Prince, who the mayor and mayor's wife. We will vote for them, they'll win just now. Assistant Mayor is uh, Claudine followed by Cecilia. These are the Las Vegas biggies. 
They are, we have them in our church. So please bring on the people. <laughs> Amen. All right. Please write. And then Monday night we are praying with our Papa the Bishop. Thursday night we are praying with our Papa the Bishop. Amen. And then be following the Healing Jesus campaign. Amen. Are the percenters working? Mr. Prince, I've heard of you, Pa. I've heard of you. Thumbs up. I've heard of you, Mr. Prince. Very good. Auntie Nami, are you? Are you in? He's in his own. No. You two do yours. Uh huh. It's working. All right. So after church, please make sure you gather your Basenta people. At least see yourselves in person. Because it's been Zoom meetings, right? So see yourselves in person and uh, make sure you at least greet one another. You can plan some socials, whatever, you know. Amen. And then on the swollen Sunday, we are also going to provide food. All right? We're going to eat after church. Easter Sunday, we will, we will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we would also uh, have a reception for the invited guests. Amen. All right? And Reverend Lindsay, our convener, told us that when we close from church on Sunday, we should not be the people in front of the line to get the food. The guests should eat first. And then we would also eat. Is it a good plan? Very good. All right, shall we rise to our feet? We're closing. So at 3 p.m. today, which is 6 p.m. Eastern, Apostle Joel, who is our convener in North America and Canada, is having a Zoom meeting for all the children. What's the age group? From 9 to 18 years. Please, if you have anybody 9 to 18 years in your house, kindly remind them. to. It's a Zoom meeting. So they can all just join in on their phone or iPad from wherever they are. And Apostle Joel himself is going to preach to our children. Amen. Yesterday we had a powerful safe meeting here. Put your hands together for the Lord. Was it powerful? Good. Ma, ma, I mean, Kayla. Kayla, come, 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 run. Uh, um, why did I call you? Uh -huh, I said the meeting. Our meeting yesterday. So we had a safe meeting yesterday. It is, uh, what did we do? 9 to 21? Very good. Was it powerful? Yeah. Are you glad, are you, glad you came? Yeah. I really liked everything about it. Do you think more people should come? Yes. Okay. Do you think your daddy should drop you off every day to, for the meeting? Yes. <laughs> Do you think other people, every day of the meeting, do you think other people should bring their children? Yes. Okay, what did you learn yesterday? I learned about um, what it means to be, to be saved and how to be saved. Can you hear her? IT, can you give us volume, please? Share the volume, please. Be kind with the volume. I know you can shout. I learned about um, how being saved is really important and how you have to be delivered from sin to be able to go to heaven. Oh, cool. Who else wants to share what they learned? Real quick. Okay, Jesse, come. Give it to him. Put your hands together for Jesse. What did you learn? So, I learned yesterday that it's important to have Christianity as your eternal religion and like if you have no experience or knowledge about salvation, then it's impossible to get to heaven. Wow. Powerful. Anybody else wants to share what they learned? Quick, 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 quick. Marian, come and tell them what you learned. It's important they'll be hearing the truth and the right things. I told you why yes last week, right? Because if we don't tell them the right things, somebody else will tell them the wrong things. Amen. Eh? Mr. Prince, you were not here last week. My classmate, my classmate, his daughter, having a wedding soon. 
she's marrying a girl my classmates so if we don't teach them somebody else will teach them do you understand good what did you learn yesterday I learned that if you're not born again there's no way you can go to heaven say that again slowly if you're not born again there's no way you can go to heaven did you hear her did you hear what she said use my lesson if you're not born again there's if you're not born again there's no way you can go to heaven did you hear Hurry up, we want to go home, Marian. If you're not born again, there is no way you can go to heaven. Why? Why do you say that? Because in the Bible it says that there's no way to go to heaven without being born again. Okay. Because Nicodemus, Jesus told Nicodemus that except ye be born again, ye shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So we are teaching them the importance of of being born again, not just coming to church. And then we are teaching them scriptural basis for what we believe and what we are doing and why we are doing it. Is it a good thing? Will you support it? Should we continue? Amen. All right, powerful. So 3 p.m., please zoom in for your children today. Apostle Joel himself is going to be teaching them. Amen. And start inviting your people to Swollen Sunday, uh, April, 17th and we are having an Easter convention the Fr Good Friday, Good Friday night. We are all meeting here. Usually what do we wear Good Friday night? Black and red or black? What do we wear? Black and red. Anything black or red? We wear it because we're coming to celebrate the death of Jesus. And then Saturday we use it to invite our people, work on bringing all the people. And then Sunday we show up in our white, come in your white clothes and your white handkerchief. Amen. All right, please hold your neighbor. We're going to share the grace. Tell your neighbor what you learned today in one sentence. In one sentence, tell your neighbor what you learned today. Okay. Shall we share the grace? So after church, for 15 minutes, uh, Reverend wants us to teach for 15 minutes, or we continue on the apologetics, what we believe and why we believe it, just for 15 minutes before we leave. So, oh, I wanted to make an announcement, I'm sorry. Do you see this baby here? All right, so this is Auntie Doris's grandson. Auntie Doris has a grandson. Her first, her first daughter, lady, had a baby, and that's the picture. He's called Richard Jr. Put your hands together for the Lord. So you can call, you can call them, you can call her. So now she's no longer Sister Doris. She's now Grandma Doris. And Terra is no more baby Terra. She's now Auntie Terra. People are getting promoted in the church. So we have a grandma and a new auntie. We, come, we thank the Lord for safe delivery. Sometimes people go, they don't come back. Or they go come back without the baby. But they both went and they both came out safely. So we thank the Lord. We don't take it for granted. So you can get ladies now. Oh, look at him. That's so cute with a smile while he's sleeping. I think the mommy gave him some, grandma gave him some jollof already. Wow, he's very happy. What a shock. All right, so get lady's number from grandma, congratulate grandma herself, and then call lady and congratulate her. And I'm sure we'll have a baby dedication or outdooring or something. We'll keep you posted, keep your ears on the ground. We'll tell you what they want to do. Amen. And then some of you be ready to be godmother and godfather. It's not by title, it's by pocket. Uh, grandma, choose the people with pockets. I'll help you. Eh? <laughs> Don't choose the people who can't do nothing as godmother and godfather. 
Amen. All right, let's share the grace so we can go home. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, the fellowship, the contribution, the participation of the Holy Ghost, the 200 children, which includes all the important people in my life, the, can the series of victories and a cancellation of curses, deaths and deaths, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.